what's it like, and I think this is different with the circus in your books, is you're telling a story that you don't know the ending to. And how is that like piecing together a story when you don't know where it's going to lead? You sit down to write a book, you do, as you say, you do know what the ending is going to be and you're constructing a narrative arc that kind of leads from, from the beginning to what is a known ending. But it's interesting how even though we have a nonstop news cycle and there's, the, the story is constantly changing, changing in a presidential campaign, you have individual contests that were going to have resolution. Someone was going to win the New Hampshire primary. Someone was going to win the Iowa caucuses. Someone was going to drop out of the race after the South Carolina primary that would give you the ability to structure a narrative around what was happening in that given week. What was the big story of that week? What was the big drama? Uh, what was at stake for the characters? Like, uh, hopefully create a sense of narrative arc even within each, each individual episode. Do you have a favorite episode, guys, of the season so far? We love all our children equally. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, 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 I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. I do think you know one of the things that's true about this series is that covering at, at when we started, you know, seventeen Republican candidates and and four or five Democratic candidates at the outset, um, all of them on planes, all of them kind of reacting in a given moment to what the news is going to be. So as I say, let it editorially complicated to follow the news and try to do a real time documentary, logistically complicated to move all those people around. It took a little while for us to find our sea legs and kind of figure out how all this was going to work. Um, we started out, we think, pretty strong, but I think a, a episode to episode, the series just gets better as you go through it. I love The Reckoning. Big fan. Right. We're, big, we're big fans of that episode. Yeah. You're you right. know, they're, they're it's a very good one. We learned a lot going forward, but every one has stuff in it that I like a lot. And yeah. that's why, you know, when we were sitting down trying to figure out which ones to submit for the Emmys um, consideration, it is a tough call because, you know, we are aspiring to make something that's not disposable, um, you know, with all due respect to our show, with all due respect, there aren't that many episodes you could go back and, and watch now with the same impact as the day they aired because it's about daily coverage. That's true of most political coverage on TV. It is, for many people, the craziest election they've ever seen. And there's a lot at stake for the country, and, and the drama's very high. Maybe, you know, hopefully, people will look back, you know, years from now and be able to say, that's a pretty good, a pretty resonant record. It's not everything, but it's evocative of the high points of this campaign, that it illustrates some of the really key uh, figures in it, the tensions between them, what those people were like, what the big turning points were in the race, um, that it'll kind of stand the test of time as kind of a... As, as a historical record. At least that's what we're all aspiring to. Best of luck at the Emmys. We'll see if we can get Catherine Harris to supervise the voting process there. Can I say, can I say just a few more things? Hanging Chad. Yeah, of course. Thank you for Gold Derby, yeah. big fans, and yeah. Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> that was great.